I decided to make this video for all the people who have never written any code and you want to know what it's all about. So, hi, I'm Yako Bressler. I am going to teach you how to write code. If you've never written code, this is for you. If you already have written code, then you might you might learn something new. Um, I a little bit about me. I am self-taught. Taught myself how to code. I've been doing this for about six years, and I think it's pretty cool. So let's get right into it. Um, you have not. You do not need to have written any code to follow this tutorial. All you need is a computer that can access. Uh, I'll show you what you need to access in a bit. Uh, you need to access the internet. Um, we are going to create a Pig Latin translator, and Pig Latin has these two uh, these two rules. You can go here and learn more how Pig Latin works. Yes, I know. All right, and there's two rules. The first rule is if a word starts with a consonant, you add an a at the end, so hello becomes hello hey. And then if it doesn't, if it starts the vowel, then you just add a hey or whatever at the end. So and it comes anti. We're going to learn how to do these two things. Pretty basic, pretty cool. Before you get started, you might want to, uh, how do you get to what I'm doing? So everything I'm doing, you're going to be able to follow along. So in the video, I'm going to put a link. The link's going to look something like this. So you'll click on this. And then you'll click on this button, opening collab. And then it'll take you to what I'm doing. And when you hit run, this little button here, it might give a little pop up. Here we go. So you're going to say run anyways. Now you're in action. Okay. So let me close off this other one. It might take a second starting up a computer in the background for you. Okay. So let's clear this out. Let's talk about a bunch of things. All right. These are little collapsible sections. Don't really have to worry about it. Um, Okay, let's talk about the introduction to coding. So before we, we get into the introduction of coding, let's just reiterate what we're trying to do. We're trying to tr create a pig lion translator. You give it a word and it turns into pig lion. Should be pretty pretty basic. Okay, so before we get started, we need to learn how to write code, right? You've never written any code. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna write your first line of code. And we can like delete it and you can rewrite it on your own. You can have a this open and on another screen you can be following along typing it all out so the following is all written in python uh, there's other languages you could do this in language doesn't matter we're going to get you writing your first little piece of code so you can create a variable just an our word equals hello and you see how those quote marks so it could either be single quote marks and we'll run this little button here and that's our word or it could be double quote marks, but it has to be one or the other. It can't be one side double and the other side single. This is gonna break. It's gonna watch. It's gonna give us a very sad face. Ooh. So if you ever get this error, just start over from the beginning. Do one side and then the other side. Great. So our word is a variable. And we've assigned it to this string. This word. And print tells the computer to say it back to you. Okay, now let's talk about the next piece of code. This in green is a comment. The computer ignores this. And it has this symbol in the beginning of it. So that's the pound symbol or whatever other you want to call it. And if you, it's underneath the number three, shift three will get you that number. So if I remove, so let's run this. Our word, we'll talk about this in a second. Okay, and let me remove the comment. Put that comment back. Great. Now let's talk about what we're doing on this line of code. So this is our, we're creating a new variable. Let's just start from the beginning. We're gonna create a new variable. We'll call this our word loud. And we're gonna make it equal to our word, the word we just chose. Plus we can add things to our word. So we'll add a few exclamation marks. Oh, and I need to print it, otherwise you'll never see it, right? There you go. So now you see how to create variables and how to print. Pretty straightforward. Let's keep going. I want to make a word that's very loud. So we added some exclamation marks. But in Python, you can make an entire word uppercase by doing dot upper. 
So let's start this from the beginning. So our word, very loud, equals, we can take our original word, and we'll do dot upper. This, don't worry too much about like the intricacies of what comes before and after. You're writing your first line of code. Don't try to understand too much of the depths of a programming language, but understand that this is gonna make it title kit, like uppercase. We'll just run this. There we go. And because it's very loud, we'll add some exclamation marks. Great. We're not gonna to go too, too deep into it. If you got more questions, that's good. That means this is interesting to you, but let's move right along because I wanna get you to the big line part. Number two, logic. So logic for you is probably thinking. For a computer, it means knowing when to do something or not to do something. So we're gonna tell a computer, we're gonna create a variable called true. Now you notice it's not all lowercase and it's not all capital. It's the first letter is capital, it's title. This means on and false means off. Those only two values. Don't worry too much about the intricacies of that. Just it's either true or false. So if this is true, we can, we can even just do this instead. Print, I'm doing this. Yeah, let's just do that. If true, then I'm doing this. Now let's talk about the opposite. So we'll just say print if true. If true, you're doing this. If false, so we can tell a computer to do one thing or the other thing. Cool. Let's move along. And I'd encourage you if this is like a lot, then just press pause, do this on the side, have your own little code open, kind of run the code, and you can write it by pressing this little green button or whatever this button is. And you could change it, make it true again. Or if you want to make it a variable, so you can have, have what I had like previously, do this. Oh, I just realized I need to have the code that you saw earlier so that you won't, um, you'll be able to follow along the way it is written for me. I probably should have saved it and made a copy. All right, I'll do my best to make it easy for you to follow along. Oh, I think actually the previous version will be saved. We'll have to figure this out later. Okay, great, we're done with logic. String manipulation. So string is for a computer program, a word or a bunch of words. It's a bunch of words strung together. So an ABC, the letter A is a string because it's could be A and B and C. Okay, so words is primarily what we're gonna be interacting with in our program because we're gonna be creating a pig Latin uh, translation. So we're gonna say S, our string is hello. Hello, a string can be a single letter, many letters, many sentences, but it's one big blah. Okay, so let's get the first letter. So we get the first letter by using zero. Now this is one of the things you can have to wrap your mind around. The first floor in a building, it's not the lobby, it's not the first floor, it's the zero floor. The basement is negative one. And then the floor above the ground floor is plus one. So if you're on the second floor of a building in Python, you're on floor one. So it might take a little bit to wrap your head around it, but just, just understand that if you're in the ground floor, you're not below ground, you're not negative one, and you're not plus one, you're zero. So the first letter is S, the, the, the string that we're using, right? Zero. And we'll print this on the second. The second letter, so what's more than one, so don't think two, think second is one more than the first, which is one. And then the la okay, and then the last letter is start from the end and go back one. So I probably should have saved this for another one. I'll comment this out. So let's just see the first and the second letter. The first letter is H, second letter is E. And now let's do this last one. So you can go backwards, start from the end. So if you want to start from the end, you can't you have to go negative. You can't do negative zero because it doesn't know how to do that. You say negative one and it'll choose the last letter. Let's do that. Okay, cool. So you need to start from the beginning, you need to start from the end. Now, what if I want the entire word, but not the first letter? So I'll say, hey, start at the first letter and just go to the end. So start, well, not start from the first letter, start from letter after the first letter, letter two, which is skip. So, and go to the end, there we go. And now if I wanna say start from the beginning, but everything except for the last letter, I could say the same sort of nomenclature. So the colon is like start and end. So I start from the beginning and I end almost at the end. Moving right along. Let's begin our pig Latin solution. 
Okay, we're gonna need this for later. I don't know if we're gonna, oh yeah, we're gonna need this for later. So the vowels are gonna be, we create a variable, A, E, I, O, U. And just a reminder, this is a comment. So the computer program ignores this. Let's run this. Great. We've got those vowels saved. And if you print vowels, it'll print it out for you. Now, we're gonna start with the letter open. The word, excuse me, the word open. S equals open. And we're gonna do some logic. If S zero, if the first letter in our word, which is O, is it in vowels, then print this. Otherwise, print this. Let's run this. Okay, the first letter of open is with a vowel. Now let's change this to do napkin. Begins a constant. Perfect. Our code is working just as expected. Now let's create the pig Latin code for words that start with vowels. So we'll go back to S is open. If S is in vowels, this is the same logic we just did, have the new word equals the same word plus yay. That's the Latin rule. That's the pig Latin rule. Okay, open yay. Yay. And we can do uh, all. All yay. Great. Pretty easy. The constant part is going to be a little trickier. Also, you can hide your code here if you want. Oh, I should also add the number that you see inside here is just the order that you ran it in. It doesn't, you don't really need to pay attention to it. Okay, so we have vowels. Now let's talk about non-vowels. Constant. So this is the same code we did previously. So we don't have to pay attention to it, but we've got some new code. So let's go through what's happening here, okay? We have the word hello. H is not a vowel, it's a consonant. So we're gonna skip this. We're gonna do all this. The first thing we have to do is we have to get the entire, so let's go back to the top what the rule of pig Latin is. If it begins with a consonant, you take the first letter, move it to the end. So you say, hello, hey. Here we go. So this is the hello. It's the entire word starting from here to the end. Right, I skipped the first word, so it's gonna give me this. Then I'm gonna create my suffix, which is gonna be dash H, so dash plus H plus A. And then I put it all together by adding them. Now I really could all do this in one line, but it'd be a lot to do, so we broke it up into separate lines so it's easier to follow. Let's see what our new word is. There we go. So let's just review one more time. This is our first word except for, is our word except for the first letter. That's this. And then this is, so this is our dash plus the first letter plus a y. And one thing I want to remind you, it doesn't matter if you single quotes or double quotes, as long as they're consistent. And then we add these two together. So let's just print it again and we'll switch it again. We'll just see what this looks like. Okay, open yay. Great. We have written our translator. That's it, we're finished. Now we're gonna put it together and we're gonna create some more reusable code because I wanna teach you like how it all works. So if you wanna write code that's used more, more than once, you create a function. And a function is just a way of you telling the computer, say this for later. So let's create a function. We're gonna tell a computer, this is how you say hello. When I, so you create a function by saying def define. So let's just, let's just, let me just rewrite it below it, okay? Def, I'm gonna call this say hello again. And I can have it say hello. And I can have it say hello twice. So anytime I run this, so when I run this, nothing happened because I didn't execute the function, I just created it. Then when I use the function, I can run it like this, say hello. Or I can have it, let me create some more code, I'll say say hello again, use my function twice, okay? So let's just take a step back, let's review this. When you create a function, you start off by saying def, the name of your function, and then these parentheses. We're gonna to get to what these do later. For now, you don't have to worry about it. Underneath is the code that happens. You Every time you run this function, it's gonna do this code. It's like a cookbook. You're telling them how to cook a recipe for later. Great. 
Um, you could have your function run many times. So this is once, you can have it do it. Say hello, say hello, say hello. Nice. And then this is how you make it say hello in a loop. Actually, I realize loops are complicated for later, so but we'll just run this. Um, I'm not gonna explain what this is just right now because I feel like it's a little bit too difficult. Eh, I'll just say what it is. If it's too difficult, skip it because this isn't. This is a little bit harder than an introduction. But um, I'm telling Python create a range of numbers until ten, so zero, one, two, all the way up to ten, and then i is gonna be that number. So I'm saying give me all the numbers until ten, and then just print it. Okay, that's complicated. Skip right over it. We're gonna create a function for our pig lion. So I've taken all the code from above and I've just copy pasted it. And so here's what we've done. We've created a function. DEF creates a function. This is the name of my function. Convert word to pig lion. Now those parentheses I told you to ignore, well now we're gonna use them. Inside, if this is a if this is a cookbook, these are the ingredients. I say, hey, put in this and put in that. And then my recipe tells me what to do with all those ingredients. So with this function, the first ingredient is a word, right? The word that we were kind of doing before. We're gonna define the vowels again because this fun every recipe needs its own like set of instructions. So we're not gonna share, each recipe has its own. Just easy to say, easy to just follow that rule. And then I'm gonna use the same code we had earlier. So if the first letter of the ingredient you gave me is in a vowel, then we create the new word like this. Otherwise, do the same code as before. So if I run this, nothing's gonna happen because I'm not using I'm not using my function, I'm just creating it. There we go. We hit run here. Now we can use it. We'll we'll convert this to pig lion. Sweet. And we can change it. That's the nice part about functions, is you can change all the with one word, you get the same code. So we'll do ant. We'll do hello. We'll do sparkle. Ooh, I like that one. So hopefully you can see why functions are pretty cool. Let's go on to the next section. So loops. So a loop tells a computer program to do something more than once. So if I want to use my function for many words, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to create a list of words. Don't worry too hard about how this works. And I'm going to say for each thing in my list, do something. So we're going to print it each one. Now I don't have to call X. I can call it Y. I can call it thingy. Doesn't matter what I call it. I'm just going to use it. Here we go. Let's convert it back to X so that you could have it. And we're going to print each word. Hello, Sam the lion. Now you see where we're going with this. I want to run pig lion on each word. So we take the same list. And we're gonna use for X in my words, create a new word by converting the pig line and print the new word. Let's see it. Hello, hey, am say, he, hey, I, and lay. Sweet. Pretty good. Let's take this to the next level. And just so you know, there's 10, there's just a few more sections. So seven. We're gonna store our results. So you notice we created a list with all of our words. I want, a, I want a new list of all the words that I'm done with. So here's how you do it. When you create a list, you just pop them all in. But when you want to add them, here we, here's what we do. We do the same thing as before. When we take our new words and we add it to results by doing result dot append new word. Now append is in computer talk, the, the same as add to a thing. Because when you add, add, does add mean plus? Does that mean add them as a thing? Append says, bloop, add it to your shopping list. Okay, computers, each each program has their own different terms for this. You get all to nitty gritty of it. We don't need to go that far. Append works for us. So let's just run this again. Well, let's run this and we'll see what our final results looks like. So let's just do a quick recap. These are my words. I'm gonna go over each word. I'm gonna create a new word from pig lion from my function. I'm gonna save it, then I'm gonna print all the words at the end. Great, and you notice they're the same as above, but here it's just a list with them. Now, here's why we like lists. I can put all the words together of a list. I can put make them a single string. Here's what we do. I do 
dot join. I'll print this results and I'll show you what's happening. So this is a list. How I join things together in Python is you do, uh, we'll just do join result, but this won't work because what you need to do is you need to say the string you want to join it with and you put a dot. So string dot join everything in the list. So here's what you'll see. Look, I put an X between each, each thing in the list. What if I do dashes? Um, I could do commas. I could do commas with space. So for us, we just want a single space. And now we've got it. So this is one of these things that kind of like are a little bit hard to understand the beginning of programming. It's like what gets a parentheses, what gets a string. Don't focus too much on that. It's your first time writing code. You don't need to understand everything. It's more that the parts that are important for you to understand are functions, the loop, and the like changing the order of letters. This part, just skip it and tell yourself later I'm going to understand it. Okay? Perfect. We've got our list. Now, let's make our code work on sentences because we are only able to work on single words, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a sentence and we're going to do the opposite of joining. We're going to split. Here's what that looks like. Hello, Sandalai. Nice to meet you. If we split every space, we get hello, Sandalai exactly what we want. Now we're gonna create a function that does all these things for us. We're gonna put it all together. So this function, we create a function called def sentence to pig Latin, and we're gonna take in a sentence. This is our recipe book, and the ingredients is a sentence. And I'm gonna have my results, just like I did previously, an empty list. Oh yeah, I should mention, lists are square. Okay, also, if that doesn't really make sense, save it for later. Not your, your first time writing code, you don't need to understand that yet. We have a blank list. We're gonna create all of our words by splitting the sentences according to the, the spaces. We're gonna go over each word and we're gonna create a new word from the pig Latin function we wrote earlier. We're gonna save the new word to our list of results. And our final result is gonna be all the words with a space in between and we're gonna send it home. And we're gonna work, if we run this, it just saves the function, it doesn't execute it. Now we're gonna execute the sentence, this, this function to this sentence. How nice is that? Now you're up to the last final level. This we have to type in code and make a change. I wish I had to do that to make like a user input, like a computer game, those old ones from the console. So one thing to keep in mind is our code cannot handle capital letters. So if you do capital letters, you're gonna see things that maybe don't follow the rules that we wanted, or you put commas or exclamation marks, it's gonna be a little bit weird. So just understand it's your first time writing code. We didn't make something perfect. We just want to make it work and we're having fun. So here we go. If you use input, this is Python's way of talking to the, the console. I'll show you what it looks like. So we have a sentence and we're going to run our sentence on this with the function we just created and we're going to print it. Okay, here we go. Input, what sentence would you like to translate? So we'll say learning to code with Yaakov is fun. And here's our pig Latin. Earning lay ote ote ith way akobye is ye unfe. Ah. And congratulations, you're finished. So now you know how to code and you've written your first piece of code. And if if this is a lot for you, like sure, understand that this is, you know, maybe something that uh, you're doing for the first time. But hopefully I've convinced you that coding doesn't require you to sit there with like calculus and math and trigonometry, that it's a lot more of like being playful and like organizing things than it is computation. Um, that's my, so my first goal for you is coding isn't math. It's like other things. The next thing uh, I hopefully showed you is that how you organize things matters a lot like functions and words and the characters, it's a lot more important to be organized than it is to like get things like, I don't know, like this, like um, And then the last thing is that it can be silly and fun. And um, I hope this gives you a good impression of programming and coding. And I hope that you are excited from this and that you have questions about how things work and that you wanna know how all these things work and that you're gonna go and continue your learning and if not, then shame on me and let me know what I can do to do better.